Hello, this will be a quick walkthrough of how you can use Xenos to monitor the performance of your Cloud Foundry applications as well as the capacity of your Cloud Foundry account. Um, what we'll start with here um, is looking at this project, the zenpax.xenos.cloudfoundry project on GitHub. You can go to, as you can see here, github.com slash xenos slash zenpax.xenos.cloudfoundry. Um, just like Cloud Foundry themselves, we're hosting open to the world on GitHub. You can come here and get the source if you want, um, or you can just come get the package that you can use in your existing or new Xenos core or enterprise installation. Um, so the first thing that we want to do here is just test our Cloud Foundry instance locally. Um, what this means is we can have a cloud running on our local development machine. We can, have a, we can be using VMware's cloud at cloudfoundry.com. Um, for this, I'm going to use my local cloud. First thing I want to do is make sure it's working, so I'm going to target it. It'll be api.bcap.me. That's successful. We can get some information about the cloud in terms of the memory, the services, and the applications. So this is uh, the Cloud Foundry command line tool, VMC. Uh, what we want to do is use the same kind of information you can get in here, uh, but use it in a real-time monitoring, performance monitoring, capacity monitoring way in Xenos. So first thing to do is, as you can see here in the installation notes, is let's get that URL, log into the Xenos server, going to become the Xenos user, and then get that uh, URL. It'll be very fast here, it's very small. Then we install that pack, as you can see here, just like in the instructions. Wait for that to install. And then when it's done, as you can see, the next command there will be Xenos restart. To load in all the new functionality. So with that, um, we can actually go, if you want to go to this page and read more about the usage uh, and what's available once you install this NPAC, you can do so, but I'm just going to walk you through it. So over here in the browser, I'm going to go to my Xenos installation and navigate over to the infrastructure page. Now this is a fresh installation, so I don't have any other devices or monitoring going on in here, but you can see through adding that NPAC, I now have a new Cloud Foundry device class. And to add an endpoint, you just hit this Add Device menu and choose this new option, Add Cloud Foundry Endpoint. Really all you need is that same target name that I used with the VMC client, api.vcap.me. Um, if you're using VMware's hosted version, that would be cloudfoundry.com. And the email address used to register your account with that cloud and the password. You click Add here. Xenos will go off in the background and start discovering everything you know, operationally interesting about that cloud. You can see here at the top there's actually the command line that you could run instead of going through the Xenos user interface how you could uh, load this new endpoint from the command line. So you can see it's already done discovering it. You can see it's requesting the system-wide information, um, the app-specific information. It's getting all the instances for the ENV application, and all the stats for the ENV application. Now if we navigate back to the infrastructure page here, we'll see we now have, do have an api.vcap.me device under the Cloud Foundry device class. We can navigate into it to see what Xenos has discovered. So some high-level information about we're using one of our four allowable URIs, one out of 20 of our allowable apps, 256 meg out of 2 gig of memory, and so forth. You know, I'll even see what version of the cloud it is, what build it is, and who we contact for support. Um, some high-level information first. Uh, we pulled out all of the frameworks um, that are, you're allowed to deploy under in this cloud. So in this case, you see Grails, Node, Rails 3, Sinatra, and Spring. Um, you can see each one has a number of runtimes that it supports, app servers that it supports, and how many applications you have running under that framework. So for Sinatra, you can see there are two runtimes and one app server. If you want to know what those are, you can choose runtimes. Okay, so it's Ruby 1.8, Ruby 1.9, and app servers. It's just thin. All right, another high-level piece of information is the system services. What services are available for our applications to use um, within this cloud? And here we see there's Mongo, there's MySQL, um, there's Redis. 
We can actually see how many of each one of these have been provisioned. We have one MySQL server provisioned. And if we look under the provision services, you'll see where that is. Um, now, the really interesting thing here is once you get into the graph. So I just added this uh, Cloud Foundry endpoint or target into the system, so I'm not, uh, I'm not getting up-to-date metrics just yet, but you can see I had this in here previously. And what we're collecting is utilization of the app URIs were allowed, the memory were allowed, the apps were allowed, and the services were allowed on a, a per-target basis, so in aggregate for the whole um, Cloud Foundry account, so to speak. And there's a default 99% threshold. Um, if any of these utilizations get too high. And then more detailed information about exactly how many URIs, apps, instances, memory, services that we're using over time. We can get more granular than this by going into the individual applications. So as we saw earlier, there's only one application deployed in this cloud. We can see its status, the framework, the runtime that it's using, basic information, four of four instances are running. Uh, but we can see gra more granular performance information, capacity information for this application. Again, with 99% threshold, CPU, average across all the instances, memory and disk. And again, the actual usage of memory, disk, instances, URIs, and services. Um, we can even get one step more granular than this and look at the individual instances of this application. Um, again, some high-level information about what they're using in terms of resources. Um, and we can drill directly into any one of these instances. So we'll just go into one, and we'll see the performance, the capacity for this single application instance. Again, 99% uh, threshold on the CPU memory and disk utilization, and the actual memory and disk usage over time. So that, in a nutshell, is what Xenos monitors for you um, with this Cloud Foundry Zenpack. Um, it's about everything that is available through the Cloud Foundry API. And the great thing about it is, as with everything Xenos, is you don't have to come in here and make sure to update it when you deploy new applications, um, increase or de decrease the amount of instances of those in uh, applications, um, deploy or provision new services. Uh, Xenos is going to be remodeling this on an ongoing basis, so it's always automatically applying this monitoring to the current Cloud Foundry environment. So thanks for looking at this. If you want further information, the best place to go is over here to this github.com slash xenos slash zenpacks dot xenos dot cloud foundry. Um, you can enter issues or bugs if you find any. Um, or you can email me, as you saw in my email address earlier when I was adding that cloud is cluther at xenos.com. Thanks for watching.